Hello and welcome to my kitchen today. I am Luca Simmons, one of the mavens at Histamine Haven, and I'm really glad that you're joining me here in my kitchen to talk about different kinds of noodles. So here at Histamine Haven, our goal is to empower you to know which foods are gonna help reduce what's contributing to driving those histamine symptoms. Whether you're coming at this because you have histamine intolerance, or if you know that you have mast cell activation, then histamine is a part one of those players that can just add to your day and drive those symptoms. So going a low histamine approach can be one of those ways to help support the body in reducing those symptoms. And there's a lot that we can do with food. So you are watching this video for one of a few different reasons. You could be taking one of our courses, you could be checking out our book, and you could also just be perusing our YouTube channel and or you're landing here because you don't know how to make zoodles and this was the first video that showed up in your feed. Well, whatever the case may be, we're glad you're here. So today's short tutorial is to walk you through what are some of those noodle alternatives that you can turn to and know that they will not contribute to driving some of those histamine symptoms for yourself. So I've got a lot of different little pieces I wanna take you through today. I wanna to start with equipment. So we'll get into ingredients and different ways to think of noodles in a second. But you can have something as simple as just a cheese grater or a regular grater. It doesn't have to be for cheese. It can also be as simple as just having a veggie peeler. This is actually how I started making zoodles a few years back before you could even make your own or purchase them at the store with one of these fancy little things. So this is a spiralizer. I have a very inexpensive uh, machine here. I think this cost me $15. They often, I often see them in thrift stores and here in my neighborhood at the Valley Village. So do a little bit of digging around and figure out what's gonna fit your price point. There's some really fancy ones that you can purchase online or you can get something as simple as this little guy that I got for $6. So they all have a little bit of a different way of producing a grain-free and low histamine option for those who want to make noodles as part of a low histamine approach to supporting themselves through health. So let's start first with quite possibly the really nicest, softest entry into going grain-free. These are, they're called, uh, well, this Pacific brand calls them Oriental Style Vermicelli. I think this package might have cost me three, maybe four dollars for a whole bag. There's 500 grams in it. And I'll tell you, these are also known as glass noodles. Uh, they are the traditional noodle that you would make with the Korean dish called Jack Chong. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly, probably not. I apologize if I didn't say it correctly. There's my French Canadian uh, background there. The key to looking for sweet potato noodles or jachong noodles or glass noodles is to read your list of ingredients. And this package here, I just found at my local grocery store, nothing fancy. The list of ingredients, it says sweet potato starch. That's it, only sweet potato starch. So I love these noodles. First of all, they cook up in five minutes flat. Second of all, they are grain free. So in the picture of histamine things, grains contain compounds that can enhance or incite your mast cells in the gut lining to dump histamine. Yeah. Well, we don't want to add histamine that you have to deal with over the course of the day. So one of the methods to the madness of going low histamine is to take out all of the grains. But that's one of those tricky things that can trip up and stop a lot of people in wanting to do a low histamine approach. What? I have to cut out my grains? There's alternatives. And this is merely an invitation to go play with your food. But these noodles are a really nice entry point. They cook up in five, six minutes tops in boiling water. You drain them just like you would regular noodles. So they're a quick cook. They're great to have on the pantry for emergency dinners where you need to get something quickly on the table or for lunch when you're home. And I love them because they're also low oxalate. So for those in our circles who know that they need to keep things low oxalate, in addition to being low histamine and grain free, sweet potato noodles for the win. So these I love and you can, you can use these however you would use whatever noodles. If you're having a spaghetti night, 
put spaghetti on these kinds of noodles, if you're making a stir fry, if you're making a sort of ramen type soup at home, these noodles will fit the bill and they will meld right into the mix. Even a pad thai would do okay with these types of noodles. So cook them up and use them as you would any other type of noodle. Okay. So I wanted to take that one out of the picture because it makes so much noise. I wanted to also showcase some ready-made zoodles. So first things first, I found this at my local grocery store yesterday, and these are butter squash spaghetti. So I don't know if you can see, but they are already prepared. Not a product placement. <laughs> Forget where I got them. But this, just give me an idea. This is made from butternut squash. Butternut squash is a low histamine squash, so it's one that we love featuring in many of our recipes. And when it's pre-spiralized like this, honey, if this is what's gonna get you to eat homemade food tonight, uh, this is the one for the win. This is very easy. It's already spiralized for you. You don't need special equipment. And typically, in the grocery stores, these tend to fly off the shelves because there's a lot of people following paleo diets or keto diets and looking for lower carb options than noodles would typically provide. And these types of root vegetables or squash as that base are easy to replace one-to-one -one in any of your recipes. And for example, here on this package, they tell you saute in one tablespoon of oil over medium heat for three to five minutes and they're ready. So these do require a little bit of cooking, three, four, five minutes tops. You can use any type of good fat, or you can also steam them if you wish, or just heat them up in a pan with a sprinkling of water in order to rehydrate them and warm them up. As they warm, they will start to soften. If you're using them in a soup, then you would want to only put them in the last three to four minutes of cooking of the soup. Otherwise, you run the chance that they will start to disintegrate. So this is a really good option, but I want to point one thing out. I am frugal, and I need to be frugal, I want to be frugal, it's just the way that I operate. This package of noodles cost me $5. Okay, not too bad, but this package of $5 noodles is only enough for two of us if we're having a spaghetti night. So for the three of us at our house to have spaghetti, it's going to cost me $10 in ready-made zoodles. Why not do something different? Oh, okay. So if energy is low, and if it's an okay thing for you to spring a couple of bucks for these kinds of packages every now and then, I wanna show you another option. I have it in the freezer. I didn't wanna take them out as I was preparing, but I want you to ignore the name brand. But this is a frozen package of the very same thing. Butternut squash noodles. So this is prepared spiralized butternut squash. The one thing I will recommend is that you check the list of ingredients on the back and there it should list only butternut squash. So here in the ingredients list, it's only butternut squash, nothing else added in and that's the secret you wanna go for. The package typically will give you instructions on how to cook. It might need an extra 30 seconds or one minute longer than the fresh stuff would only because it's coming from frozen. Make sure you keep it in the freezer until you're ready to utilize it in whatever recipe you're going to be featuring it in. Okay. Okay, so now that those packages are put away, let's talk about making your own at home. So you've got the package stuff, the ready to go stuff, the I need to get dinner on the table quick thing that you could pick up at the grocery store on the way home. Good job. What are some other options that you can bring in? So I want to start with this. This is one. This is a spiralizer, and I will be honest. I actually don't use it very much because I find the only thing it can do well is cucumber and zucchini. If only if the zucchini is small enough and carrots. So a spiralizer. This is just a handheld one where you just twist the vegetable through, and it should cut the noodles. I think you should be able to see it there as it goes through. Now part of it is that you end up wasting the core of it, which is a bit sad for me. <laughs> and this one I find the, neat, the, the blades don't shred exactly. Sometimes you've got longer chunks that didn't get quite separated. So this is a good one to use with cucumber, carrots, zucchini as well. 
Cucumber I love making zoodles out of and then just turning it into a salad. Cucumber is great raw. So if you tolerate cucumber okay, then that's one that you can make a quick noodle for with uh, for a salad, say for example. Now, the next one I want to show you is this big giant of a machine. It's very utilitarian. It has suction cups on the bottom. That's one of the things that I've recognized that when I'm making zoodles or if I'm using my spiralizer, you want to make sure that somehow you're able to secure it onto the surface on which you'll be working because otherwise it tends to slip around. It's a bit of a messy affair, but I figured out a system that works. When you're doing something, I'll just take half of this zucchini. Now, zucchini, uh, one of the things, if you know that salicylates are an issue for you, this is not one for you. Zucchini tends to be high in salicylates. So for those who know that salicylates trigger your histamine-driven symptoms, then you want to replace the zucchini with something else, maybe a carrot noodle or something else. So this spiralizer, if you find a good one, they should have three or four different types of blades, and that will allow you to cut your zucchini to different sizes, or your zoodles, or whatever type of other vegetable you'd like to do. So I sometimes do this with actually a sweet potato. So I've got a sweet potato on the side. I don't know if I'll show it, but I have done this with sweet potato noodles before. So this just it's kind of a more complicated version of the one that I was doing cucumber with, but this, is the zucchini slicer for zoodles. Now, if you replace your noodles in any dish, whatever recipe you're making with this type, you're increasing the vegetables, you're increasing the antioxidants, and you're decreasing the foods that might be triggering the dumping of histamine in your body. <laughs> What's not to love? So this machine tends to make pretty nice little curls. I find they're a little bit long sometimes, so I might snip them in half. And this I would use just about anywhere. I've used this type of zoodle to add into a stir fry just in the last minute. I have used it to make pad thai where I make the remainder part of the pad thai, including the sauce. And then I will toss it with these types of zoodles. You can use it in soups. You can do any kinds of things. We've got a few recipes and ideas for you in the cookbook. So take a gander and start playing with your food. Zucchini is probably the most traditional, well, traditional. I think people have only been eating zoodles for the last 10 years max. But this is probably the most common zoodle that people will consume is the zucchini noodle. Okay, so now you've seen the sweet potato noodles, the butternut squash, pre-made zoodles. You've also seen the cucumber and the zucchini spiralized down into noodles. Let's go one step further. I know I'm gonna hear from some folks who are like, oh man, another thing gadget I have to buy for my kitchen? Oh, you don't need any special gadgets. Making zoodles is accessible to everybody. It's not just for a certain portion of society. So I want to point out that the easiest way to make something into a type of noodle, if you will, is to grate it. So this is a parsnip, these are Alberta parsnips, no less. So these ones, it's the dead of winter, it's parsnip season. So parsnips are a bit higher in carbohydrates, but they're really nice slow carb and they add such a nice earthy texture. And parsnips, Parsnips are also, they take a bit longer to cook, so they're a little bit more robust. So if you were looking for something that might serve well as the base of something, you can simply grate them, much like I've done here. I haven't done very much, just to showcase. I'm pretty sure most people know what grated food looks like. But grating your parsnips can lend a really lovely, earthy, nutty base to whatever dish you're trying to make. So in my house, what I'll do is I will grate using my grater, sometimes I have, a, I have a food processor that grates as well. So if you've got a food processor, you could do it that way. And then those grated ones, I toss with a bit of duck fat and I'll cook them in a very flat uh, amount. In, sorry, my dog. In a flat, uh, on the cookie sheet, in the oven at about 375 for 15 minutes or so with some duck fat. And then they'll get crispy and it'll be almost like a rösti. So very traditional uh, Swiss potato dish. So here we go. 
uh, grated parsnips for the win. What's not to love? Okay, so now let's look at another way to maybe make some zoodles in a really inexpensive way. I'm a, there's my dog. He's chatting, letting us know all the kids are coming home from school. <laughs> So this is actually what I started out making zoodles with before I could find a, a veggie slicer, a noodle-y thing, a spiralizer. Couldn't think of what the word was. I started making carrot ribbons and turning those into noodles for pad thai. I don't know if you've noticed, but I really like noodles. <laughs> this is, I've worked hard at making things work in my house. So you can simply just peel your carrots using your peeler, just keep going around and around until you get to the core of the carrot. Now these are organic Alberta carrots, so I feel okay having the peel on. I leave the peel on. Um, there's a lot of really great nutrients on there. There's great microbiome from the soil, so I leave them. And I'm going to cook them anyway. So if there's a bit of dirt clinging to it, I'm not really worried about it. And then you just keep peeling, you just keep turning your carrot until you've peeled the length of it, however long you want your zoodles to be, your carrot noodles. And then, as you can see, these are really quite thin. And these will cook up in about four minutes in boiling water. And they'll act just like noodles in the dish. So whatever type of sauce you want to toss these with, if you want to add them to a stir fry, because you really remember those Cantonese chow mein that your mom used to make, but those egg noodles give you grief. Oh, replace them with shredded carrots. This is a brilliant, brilliant, very cost-effective way to make a grain-free, delicious and nourishing type of zoodle. All right, so now we've done a few different types of vegetable noodles. Now I'm gonna show you something that doesn't even need a peeler. I'm assuming most of you will have a knife in your kitchen. So this is the next very easy and this is Maven Tracy Reed's favorite way to make zoodles or vegetable based noodles, if you will, is to use cabbage. So this is a cabbage. I would typically take the outer leaf off just because that's what was exposed in the grocery store and it's a bit limp at this stage. So this, make sure you're cutting a piece off that would be a nice thickness, not too thick, and that won't have the center really tough core attached to it. And then simply shred with your knife as thin or as thick as you wish. So you can chop it thinly if you'd rather have softer, easier bites of that type of vegetable noodle, I guess. Or you can go a little bit wider. If you're looking for more the, the size and the, I suppose, of something like fettuccine, for example. So in our recipe that we've shared with you or in the cookbook, we share a recipe on hot buttered cabbage as noodles. So there's two ways to cook it. You can cook it on the stovetop, steam it very simply, toss it into a pan with a little bit of fat or a little bit of stock or water, or you can also toss it into your Instant Pot. So we have a recipe there on how to cook it with some ghee and water. I think the measurement, if I'm not mistaken, was a quarter cup of ghee, half or a third of, half a cup, half a cup maybe of uh, filtered water in order to get enough liquid in the Instant Pot itself. And then putting your chopped cabbage noodles, zoodles if you will, in the Instant Pot and cooking that for a very brief, I think it's three minutes, for all of three minutes. So that's another really simple way to use a vegetable base to make a noodle so that you are keeping those grains out of your regimen in order to reduce what's triggering possibly some of those histamines. Okay, so we've got one last recipe, one last zoodle way to share with you. Do you see how many options there are? We really wanna reinstate this concept and this idea of abundance. Because you're approaching this new way of eating, we don't want you to see it as a way of restricting or of missing out on things. If nothing else, the way you were eating before had those go-tos that you had all the time, and now approaching it with a low histamine, low lectin way of thinking, now you've got all of these possibilities that have opened up. So choose one or two of these types of recipes that you wanna feature in your meals in these next two weeks. Give them a go. See what you think of it. So this next one, the last one, 
is going to be featuring the humble spaghetti squash. I love spaghetti squash, especially in winter. It is low histamine. It's really easy to cook. They grow really well here in Alberta. They may also grow very well where you are, I hope. They're delicious and they're really cost effective. So I quite love using a spaghetti squash. If you've ever cooked them, there is a magic trick to them and it's how you cut them. So there's two ways in the book and the recipe we've provided to you that you, can, oops, that you can choose to cook your spaghetti squash. You can do it either in the oven or in your Instant Pot. I broke my Instant Pot just recently making some stock, so I need to save up my pennies to buy a new one. So today I'm just going to demo how to make it in the oven. It's really easy to make it in the oven and you don't need special equipment, which I quite like. So the beautiful thing about spaghetti squash most people who try it when it's cooked in one of these ways are really quite surprised at how it tastes. So the, it, it all depends on whatever sauce you're going to be going, sending along with it. Because a spaghetti squash has such a very neutral flavor, it just blends so well with other dishes. So you can use this wherever you would use noodles of any kind. So anywhere you'd use egg noodles, say for, I don't know, a stroganoff or stroganoff would be fairly high histamine, Luca, or somewhere where you have uh, a spaghetti sauce, you know, no tomato sauce with some meatballs. Serve it on this guy and it's going to be delicious. Uh, anywhere, even in a pad thai, I would cook this up first and then add them in that last minute of cooking. You could also use spaghetti squash as noodles if you wanted to add it to a soup and you wanted to make, say, for example, a chicken noodle soup. Well, this will do a brilliant job of if you replace those noodles that might trigger some of the histamine stuff with this low histamine alternative. So the way that you've seen spaghetti squash cooked before, I'm going to get gather. It's probably cut in half, cut side down into the oven, Bob's your uncle, bye. And then you just cook it. Well, that would be okay, except the strands don't come out as long. I'm going to show you a trick. So for me, I'll cut discs about two inches in diameter. You have to be careful not to slice off your fingers here. <clears throat> if you do a preliminary cut in first, then you can get your knife in there and be very mindful of your fingers. It gets a bit tricky the further along you go. I'm going to set those aside. I'm just going to show you what we do next. So in this core, you've got the seeds and the middle gunk of that squash. Those pieces you want to take right out. And sure, you could save those seeds and you could dry them. You could roast them and make tasty seed treats out of them if you wish. Just like your mother probably did with the pumpkin seeds at Halloween. They would turn out quite nice. But these rounds I leave as is. On my cookie sheet, you can do the same thing in your Instant Pot if you did not kill your Instant Pot by making too much broth and overflowing and killing the machine. Then by all means, please. In your Instant Pot, you want to put your insert in, your little trivet at the bottom, add your cup of water, pop these rings on top, and go for five, six minutes tops. If you're putting in halves, if you've cut it in half instead of doing the rings, then you'll want a little bit longer time, about seven minutes. So you just keep going until you've taken out all of those seeds and you lay those slices on your cookie sheet. Okay, so I very swiftly chopped the rest of that squash and as you can see, I've got about six rings or six rounds and some are a little bit thicker than the other, doesn't really matter. You will lay them on parchment on your cookie sheet or in a glass dish if you wish as well, that will work as well. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water on the bottom. Part of that is really just to help steam these squash as they're roasting in the oven. And you'll see when I come back how delicious it is after one hour at 400 in the oven. And welcome back. So now I just heard the timer go off and I did the dishes in the meantime and I am ready to take out the squash out of the oven. Let's go check. Ooh. Ay, ay, ay. 
Oh, I can't see. <laughs> All right. Don't look at my dirty oven. <laughs> so here's the squash, 400 degrees, one hour. They are really roasted quite well. And I think they should shred like a dream. So I don't know if you're able to see. There's a nice little browning. They are really nice and soft. Now comes the stage of making noodles out of these cut spaghetti squash. So if you'll recall, I just tossed them on the, on the cookie sheet with some water in order to steam as the cooking time went on. I was a bit worried it was a bit too high, but I think it worked. And here, I gently use my fork. I don't know if you're able to see this. Gently use the fork to scratch off the noodles. And because you did them in rounds, your strands are gonna be longer. It's too hot to the touch, obviously, so get yourself some tongs and a fork, and then you'll be able to pull it off no problem. And it makes a really nice little nest of noodles. Pardon the squeaking, the scratching on the plate. Oh, my ears. And there we go. And this is longer strands. That's the secret to getting longer strands of spaghetti squash noodles. How do you like that? So cutting it in rings like this versus doing a half and then trying to scoop it out with a fork. I always end up with bigger chunks when I do it that way. And then you would do each and every one of these little nests a little bit at a time. And then you've got beautiful long strands of spaghetti squash that mimic noodles quite readily. I like to cook this up at home and just heat it up in a pan with a bit of ghee or butter and some garlic because we can tolerate garlic at my house and then toss in some parsley at the end and that makes just a beautiful little noodle dish to go with dinner. So I encourage you to try some of the noodle recipes shared today and see what kind of things are going to get you excited about getting in the kitchen and trying this low histamine approach and delicious approach to feeding your sweet self. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time here on Histamine Haven. Salut, à bientôt.